Uh, thank you to Impact Nevada for putting this conference together so we can talk about the best ways to move our state forward and improve the quality of life for Nevada's residents, which should, of course, be all of our North Star. Um, I'm Zach Conine, uh, and I have the pleasure of being the 23rd state treasurer of the great state of Nevada. Sustainability efforts aren't necessarily for if I do this thing right today, tomorrow is going to be better, but it will be better a year from now. It will be better five years from now. It will be better for your kids and for my kids. Uh, you know, we've focused on sustainability for years in Nevada. It's always been a topic of conversation, at least in the last five to ten years. Um, but we never really understood how important sustainability and resilience was until the pandemic hit, right? And we realized that we didn't have to be resilient just to make more money. We didn't have to be resilient uh, for the future. We had to be resilient right now. And for a long time, Nevadans have been called on to be resilient when the government hasn't been prepared to do the work, right? We just haven't been ready. Government programs, we've determined, I've determined, uh, basically fall into two buckets. You've got your mazes and you've got your funnels, right? Funnels are programs where when people apply, we want to make sure that they move down the system and quickly get uh, resources back. Those are the types of programs we were creating during the pandemic. But some of those legacy programs that weren't sustainable, that weren't resilient, things like the UI system and Dieter, were set up as mazes where individuals would go into the top and if they made a wrong turn, they'd get stuck in adjudication and then they'd make another wrong turn. And that, that was okay when there were 200 people a week applying and we could manually get them through the process but it didn't work long term. That's the kind of sustainability and resiliency that I think we've identified, especially during the pandemic. And I know the Senator and myself and a few others are deeply committed to making sure get fixed. Uh, the governor's not here, so I can use my favorite metaphor, which he does not like, uh, which is when the tide goes out, you can see who's wearing a swimsuit. We understood that in Nevada, housing instability is economic instability, right? We have a economy and a tax system um, that is as the senator mentioned, deeply, deeply flawed. And one of the reasons is because it counts on people consuming. We need people to go and gamble. We need people to go and eat. We need people to go and buy things. And when someone is housing insecure, the chances that they're going to do that goes way, way down. And so we started trying to figure out what we could do to keep Nevadans in their homes. And we but we heard about things that they needed. We heard about how their towns did not have resilient infrastructure. We heard about places in Nevada where if one power line goes down, the whole town goes out. We went to places in Nevada, um, like the Walker River Paiute tribes, uh, land where they don't have internet at all. And so we heard about those issues. We also heard about in the traditional, uh, in, in our urban core, in the historic west side in East Las Vegas, we heard about places where students were going and sitting outside of Taco Bell to get access to the internet that they needed in order to go to school, right? We can build a better Nevada than that, but it requires building that resiliency. And because of what we heard during the listening tour, right, and the big things I don't think will surprise everyone, we heard a lot about housing, we heard a lot about child care, we heard a lot about um, digital infrastructure and the internet, uh, we heard a lot about mental health. The legislature and the governor have been able to allocate capital to that work, half a billion dollars uh, of affordable housing um, work through the Home Means Nevada initiative, and I should point out, Christine's in the room, um, when we asked groups to come together and put together plans, how could we possibly spend this money in the most impactful way possible? The Housing Coalition got together quickly, and you had, I don't know how many meetings, probably a dozen meetings, um, with hundreds of people in the room, and they put together a plan, and then the government was able to act on that plan. We wouldn't have been able to put together a plan like that, because we don't have the resources but you guys did, so thank you for that. And not just the Housing Coalition, but hundreds of groups came together. Now, the State Infrastructure Bank was originally passed in 2017, um, which for anyone keeping track was when we first expected Infrastructure Week um, to show up. Um, so 2017, we expected a bunch of money to come in, we expected the rest, and we created the Infrastructure Bank, and that did uh, transportation projects and utility projects, and like many good state ideas, uh, was put into an exceptionally nice binder, put on the shelf somewhere, and no one did anything with it. And then we come along, 2019, we start talking about it. 2021, we put it, uh, Senator and I and others get it in the state of the state, and we start talking about this infrastructure bank as a way that we can finally solve one of Nevada's biggest issues, uh, which is that we're really bad at accepting federal funding. We're bad because the structure is bad. We're bad because 40 years ago when people were creating these mazes, uh, they went through a process of saying, well, we don't need any help from the federal government. We can do this on our own, right? We're Nevada strong. It's housing education, climate-related, 
and sustainable projects, digital infrastructure. And we have a now an infrastructure bank that is as broad uh, as any infrastructure bank in the country and is now being copied by other states. Yeah. The thing that we learned during the pandemic is that we need better systems, that we are not prepared. And until we are, until we create that safety net, until we create the systems that need to be there all the time, not just when things are bad, but when things are good, to raise the quality of life for Nevadans. Until we build that, we will continue having a boom and bust cycle. We will be unsustainable in perpetuity. And so I'm grateful that you all are here today. Thanks for inviting me uh, to talk at you for a while um, about some of the work that we've done in the Treasury and about some of the work that we hope to do in the future. Um, but thank you again for having me. I'm Zach Conine. I'm a Nevada State Treasurer. Have a great day.